Okay. Yeah, so I'm on the top of Potosi, and you look towards the east, and uh, you, you look down, and it's just jungle. It was crazy. I mean, you can see from um, satellite photos, but I mean, you have 13,800 foot Antiplano with this huge ass, deep ass lake right there with this ancient alien civilization right south of that with this crazy ass, huge ass megalopolis inside of this steep ass valley surrounded by these two big ass mountains off in the distance you got this big ass volcano looking cone mountain and then you look towards the north, directly towards the north, and you can see just almost as far as the eye can see this huge chain of almost 6,000 and 6,000 foot mountains that are totally snow capped and jagged, just huge, 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 and then boom, on the left you have the lake. But the wacky thing is on the left, on the east, it's jungle. And it becomes jungle immediately. It goes down, all the way down to 2,000 feet to this town called Copali or something like that. So, anyways, yeah, we hiked back down. Two, of the, uh, we went with four guys. Two of the guys in our group with two guys, but they couldn't. Two of the guys couldn't go from altitude somewhere other, and so just me and this other guy made it. But then we go back down, and um, somebody stole my camera. So all the photos I took didn't work. Maybe it was the guy who, one of the guides, or one of the guys in the, helping in the car, or somebody. Maybe one of the guys I was with. But, um, I go back to La Paz and hang out for La Paz some more, and then I finally, you know. Oh, and then like the guy I was with, though, this American guy, he's like, I'm going to get me some something, something, like what he means by marijuana. I'm like, oh, not me. I'm not going to smoke none of that. But then I did. And then I got hooked again. I started buying bags and then I'm back in the same state I was before. Just only this time I'm smoking and staying high all the time. So I kind of started. And I don't think my brain was fully recovered because I only quit like a week or so beforehand. But um, so I'm back here like again, compounded with the altitude. But uh, I did manage to motivate enough energy one morning to ride up to the uh, highest ski resort in the whole world. Um, I rode my bicycle up there, you know, you go up the valley, and then you go up to the Antipino, and then you go up, and then it goes switchy, switch, switch, switch back up to this, um, up to this, uh, like, you know, big hut, ski chalet. Then on the side, it's kind of on a cliff. I mean, it's a beautiful setting. And from the chalet, you can actually see La Paz, the city of La Paz. And then I hiked up the ski resort, and it's actually on a glacier. So it's a, I mean, the ski resort could be open all year round, but it wasn't open at that time. It's only open in the winter time. And uh, this glacier, it shrinks like 60 feet a year. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm interested to see how big it is now. I mean, it was big enough to ski, and the lift still took it up. And it, there was a one ski lift there. It would have been amazing to ski. And the ski resort was maybe 15,500 feet high or something. We passed well past 5,000 meters. And then I hiked up to the top of where the left was and a bit a little higher, where I could actually see where the tri where the bike where the road goes from La Paz up at up 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 towards the east, over a valley, over the you know even higher than the Antiplano on the other side, and then dips down meow, all the way into the jungle where it's all jungle jungle jungle. 2,000 meter high, and then of course going down to sea level, jungle, 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 which you can see from the top of Potosi Mountain, amazing. Jungle's like right next to the Antipano tents. So then I rode my bike down, and I think I got like a flat on the way back, and I got it fixed though at some little place, and then yeah, I got like a couple of flats on the way back. But then I like got it fixed and went back to my room. And then I had problems. I was in uh, La Paz for two months, two and a half months the whole time because I was just because like I decided I wanted to do a bunch of mountain climbing. So I heard my mom like mail me a bunch of backpacking stuff, which was stupid because I could have just bought it like if not in La Paz, maybe somewhere in Chile or something. But so I waited for that, and then I for, and then when I climbed that mountain, see I'm so high that I climbed the mountain, and it was this jacket that I got that day, a, a 200 300 dollar 300 dollar like North Face jacket, down jacket with like a Walkman and some other stuff that I just got and I set it, I set my backpack down to unlock my bike because I had to go into the place to get like renew my visa because I'd already been in like Bolivia three months or something like this. I can't remember. Or to get it extended, I don't know. But, but then I rode my bike off and I forgot to pick up my backpack. Like that's how cuckoo I was. That was the same day that I rode to that ski resort. So I lost my jacket. I'm like, look, I want another jacket. Mommy, send me another jacket. <laughs> so she does. So I had to wait like another three weeks to get that. So I'm just kind of twiddling my thumbs just 
walking around. I, I did go to a gym, but only a couple of times. And I was like, I got into video game playing, uh, car racing and stuff against all the Indians. But yeah, I was pretty pathetic, really. I did. I, I but I was I was partying a lot with all of my all these other kids who would like pass through the hotel I was in, like these Israeli kids I was hanging out with. And that was fun. And went and partied with a bunch of his Israeli friends over all the Israelis were partying over at their big place, which was actually had a beautiful, the bar that they had was a beautiful view and this big glass window that you could overlook the whole city. And I saw all the movies, you know, and like multiple times too. But one day I rode my bike down to Kopali or Kopatsa or whatever, where you ride up, up and over, and then you go all the way down. It's known as the most dangerous road on the whole planet. Um, because it's literally on the edge of like a thousand thousand foot sheer cliff and I was a fucking retard this is me being an idiot on weed again because I, I like tighten my t I, I tied my backpack to my my uh, my rack on the back of the bike with bungee cords but if that backpack had have like slipped and fallen in my rear tire and locked up my rear tire I wouldn't have been able to turn I would have gone off the cliff and I was riding like a freaking maniac down that thing, like I was on a downhill race, man, on the edge of these fucking thousand... But it was a fun ride. And, you know, it was sketchy because um, in the traveler's world, if something interesting happens, all the travelers hear about it. And there's this one thing that all the travelers, especially, you know, Israel, you know how Israelis are. They, they all hang out with each other and their word gets around really fast. Israelis are funny, man. I was in Cusco. And, like, the Israelis would do line dancing. they dance in line. It was like you're in a freaking musical movie. They'd be like, doo, 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 doing all the dance. I guess it's like some Israeli pop song, and they all knew how to dance. All down the whole line, it's like, okay, I didn't know half the people in this place were Israeli. <laughs> and uh, anyways, uh, but anyway, yeah, the word was going around, the whole traveling community that I had heard in all the towns I went to in South America, that there was this Israeli girl who uh, who actually died. They, people, people do... Um, do that tour where you where you bike all the way down the most dangerous road in the world. Every three weeks, a truck goes off of the edge and everybody dies. So they've got all these trucks in the bottom. And actually, Glenn Kimball says that he saw he when he went down and he looked over and he saw gigantic house-sized, perfectly square cut granite blocks. So somebody had been cutting square granite blocks to like freak us out, some aliens or something. But anyway, I forgot to look and look at that. But if anybody does it, look for those. Anyways. Um, yeah, everybody knew. Everybody's talking about some poor Israeli girl who was who did a bike tour. They have bike tours where you rent the bikes and they take you down. I didn't do the bike tour though because obviously I had my own bike. But yeah, this poor girl, she I guess lost control or something and rode off the edge of it and fell down a thousand feet and died. And uh, and uh, so yeah, I was kind of thinking about that when I went down. But I went down to this town at the bottom. It's a two thousand feet. It's up on a ridge. Um, beautiful town because it's like up on a ridge overlooking either side um, it was kind of like a, like a Machu Picchu but only it's an actual town that all these people live in and, and there's a you know a river down the bottom and you look up and there's like you know you can see some snow-capped mountains which are like the ones kind of on the outskirts of La Paz and um, and then you look down way in the jungle and I hung out there one day and I was going to um, I was going to ride my bike from there back up to La Paz the next day, which would have been a, an accomplishment because it was like 2,000 feet. Well, and then you have to go down a long ways, down to the bottom, because this thing was actually up on a hill, and then go back up to the pass, which is like 15,500 feet or something. <sighs> would have been hardcore. And then back down into La Paz. But I get up at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I had a flat... And I was all stoned because I had smoked a bunch of weed, of my weed, because um, in, um, in uh, my hotel room, and I was just didn't, I was so stoned that I didn't have the motivation to fix my flat, so I just went back to bed. And then uh, I was in a hotel, in, in a, like, a internet cafe place, and some, like, really hot redhead girl comes up to me, and she's like, hey, can you go and hike to the river with me tomorrow? And I was like... I was like, no, I'm going to ride my bike back up into La Paz. She's like, what? You're crazy. Good luck. And then I was like, yeah, thanks. And then, anyway, that was fucking crazy. I don't know why I didn't go hike down to the river with that girl the next day. I was stupid. But, uh, yeah, so then the next day comes, and, like, I guess I didn't have the motivation to even get up or something because I was too high or something. So I was like, fuck this. 
I'm never going to have the motivation. So I just took the bus up. Stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. I should have just ridden up there. But I took the bus up. And I didn't even ride back into La Paz when I should have just... Some other guy did. He took the bus up on his bike and rode down. But I didn't. I was just, like, too stoned. And I, like, bought this big old bag of weed when I was in La Paz. Like, huge bag. Maybe a couple ounces worth. Huge bag for six bucks from these uh, Colombian... Um, artisanos, they were traveling all of South America in this pack of like six of them. Oh shit, that's my amount of time.